Yeah, the, the reason we came to Austin, uh, my wife uh, got an opportunity to work on her PhD at the University of Texas. And uh, so that was initially what brought us here. And then once we got here, we realized the tech community was vibrant here and it was a great place to live. So NetQOS started, uh, I had always had my own businesses, started my first business at 25. And then in 1999, I was waking up every morning and reading about some new business that had been funded in the Austin paper. And I thought uh, there was the opportunity to create a business around my wife's work. And so we put out a business plan and uh, in June of 2000 funded the business, kind of right before the bubble burst and then things got tough. The driving force for sewing uh, at the time we did, uh, we just, the, the recession, great recession, uh, had started. We had had 31 consecutive quarters of double-digit year-over-year growth. Everything was going great and then as soon as Lehman Brothers went under we could tell from our data that you know things were beginning to move sideways. We probably weren't going to have a 30-second quarter. Uh, CA reached out to us uh, and you know asked if we would be interested. The offer came in at a, at a rational price and, and made sense to the investors and so in November of 2009 we ended up selling to CA for 200 million dollars. Within days after we had sold uh, NetQOS to CA, I re received a call from a venture capitalist here in town that I knew uh, asking if I might have any interest in the CEO position at a company called StoreSpeed. The, the VCs ended up bankrupting StoreSpeed, uh, didn't want to continue to support it. And uh, then one of the founders, a gentleman by the name of Greg Dahl, who I'd heard good things about, approached me about buying the assets. And so that was a lot more appealing, a clean cap table, starting over, making some changes in the product that we thought would have greater appeal. And so I provided the, the funding initially to buy the assets out of bankruptcy, rebuild the team. And so that's how I got involved. I really wasn't looking to do anything immediately after NetQOS, but the opportunity came around and, and I thought it was too good to pass up. So Cash IQ was, um, an attempt to accelerate the performance of network attached storage devices. Historically, network attached storage devices have been based on spinning disks. Uh, of course, now you have solid state technology that is much, much faster, but at the same time, much more expensive. And so the idea behind Cache IQ was to incorporate solid state and through intelligent caching mechanisms, allow it to put the important data on the highest speed layer uh, in the infrastructure and, you, and keep the investment in spinning disks instead of replacing all of the spinning disks with solid state to get performance. So it was a unique technology that could do 10 gig packet inspection in the network and figure out what data was being used and who was using it and put the most important data on the solid state device. With the acquisition of Cash IQ, I was, uh, I'm free uh, now. Uh, I don't have day-to-day -day CEO responsibilities, which I have to say for the first time in, in a long time uh, is somewhat refreshing. Uh, on the other hand, I'm still very involved in many different businesses. I invest in businesses. Uh, I, through my uh, private equity group, own uh, some software companies. Uh, and so I'm involved with those CEOs on a regular basis and, and expect to continue to do so. Advice I give uh, tech entrepreneurs is to first, uh, in almost all cases, seek out a partner. Uh, if you look at the history of all the great companies, uh, almost without fail, uh, there was a partnership involved. Uh, and then surround yourself with as many mentors and advisors as possible. Uh, there are a lot of people who've been through this racket, and while the technology may change a little bit here or there, uh, the basic concepts of running a business haven't changed over hundreds of years. Uh, and so get the advice. Don't commit the same mistakes that everybody else has made. Learn from those mistakes and, and shortcut your path. Uh, you only get, are given so much time uh, to get a business and make it successful. Don't waste that time by thinking you have to learn everything yourself. So I'm writing a book about being a CEO. And being a CEO is something that a lot of people kind of fumble into. They don't necessarily start out their career being a CEO. There's no degree program in college to be a CEO. Uh, some people may think an MBA prepares you to be a CEO. I, I, I don't think that's the case at all. And so there's really not a lot of training around even what is the job. And uh, I've seen a lot through my career of people who, who got placed in the job that come out of a particular area of expertise. Maybe they were a great sales guy and you know, they became a sales VP and then one day somebody walks in and makes them CEO. And they spend a lot of time, a year, two years, three years, trying to figure out even what the job is and how to approach the job because it's very different 
than any of the particular areas of expertise and specialty that most people get trained in in a business. There are three tools that a CEO and, and really anybody in a position of leadership has to draw on. Uh, and I call those the three C's, credibility, competence, and caring. Credibility is the idea that when you say something, do people believe you? And it's not a case of you have to be right all the time. They just have to know that you believe what you're saying. I've seen way too many CEOs stand up in front of an audience and talk about how they're going to be number one in some market when they're currently 37th in that market, okay? Uh, and, and, and they don't understand how some of those, while maybe uh, optimistic and, and encouraging ideas, uh, end up destroying their credibility. And then competence is really the idea that you, you don't have to get every answer right, you don't have to make brilliant strategic decisions, but people have to feel that you really understand the business, that you can make good decisions about what market you're in and what products you're building. And then finally, caring. At the end of the day, even if you have great credibility and great competence, if people are worried that when things get tough, you're gonna to make a decision about what's better for you than the business, they won't follow you anywhere. And so if you can put those three things together, competence, caring, and credibility, uh, you've gone a long way to being a great CEO.